Hello everyone and welcome to a really crazy game from round 5 of the 2019 Isle of Man chess tournament. It's uh, world's strongest amateur Luke McShane versus uh, former World Chess Championship challenger Fabiano Caruana. Uh, before we dive uh, into this game and uh, a lot of you have requested it and for very good reasons. It's I, I think it's the best game so far but uh, uh, you'll just have to wait and see. Uh, I have a random chess question for you just you know, to, to test out your vast knowledge. Uh, so here it is. Uh, and best of luck to everyone. Who won the 1959 Candidates Tournament? There we have it. That's the question. Uh, if you're an older subscriber to the channel, of course, you all know uh, the, the answer is Mikhail Tal. And uh, if uh, uh, maybe your uh, vast knowledge goes a bit further, you also remember the final standings of the 1959 Candidates Tournament. So here it is. Uh, Tal won it with 20 uh, out of 28, followed by Paul Karras with 18 and a half. Uh, Tigran Petrosian to follow, Vasily Smyslov, uh, Svetozar Gligorich, Robert James Fisher uh, in 6th place, Friedrich Olofsson uh, and Paul Benko uh, in, in last place. So uh, congratulations to everyone who uh, got that right. Now let's uh, check out the game. With the white pieces, uh, Luke opens with e4. Uh, we have e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, sorry about that. Uh, and knight to c3, going for the four knights defense, knight to c3, we have knight to f6 by Fabi, uh, and bishop to b5, the Spanish variation of the four knights, with bishop to d6, seems kind of odd, you know, you're blocking your own bishop here, but it's it's not a problem, at some point white will, for example, capture the knight, you will recapture, and then you will have, uh, once your dark square bishop moves, everything ready to, to push d5, uh, and uh, you're, you're also uh, immediately... Uh, uh, ready ready for castling. Uh, so d3 by McShane and now just castles. Uh, we have castles by McShane and uh, h6 by Fabi. Uh, and there uh, have been uh, a lot of moves played in this position, like a lot of moves. Uh, any move you can think of has been played here, except the one McShane plays. He plays king to h1. So the early uh, attacking move, uh, getting ready to move the knight, getting ready to push f4 and start an attack against uh, Fabi's king. So it is already as of move 7 that we have a completely new game. Uh, rook to e8 by Fabi, and now bishop captures on c6. We have b captures on c6, and now already knight to g1, making way for this pawn to start marching forward. Uh, bishop to f8, the move we discussed, now you're ready to push d5, uh, and f4. Uh, we have e captures on f4, bishop captures on f4, and now Fabi goes for d5. Uh, of course, McShane doesn't want to trade. He uh, advances the pawn, pushes it to e5. Now, where are you going to go with the knight? h5, uh, not likely, as the queen covers that square, or d7. Uh, well, uh, you could go you could go uh, to, to h7, for example, uh, but Fabi goes for bishop to g4 first. He says, uh, I'm going to uh, grab this opportunity to develop the, uh, one piece, and only then we'll decide what to do with the knight. So, uh, even if I want, I can also play knight to h5 now, as the bishop covers it. Queen to d2, and now knight comes to h5. And here we have rook a to e1. So uh, McShane's pieces are uh, nicely mobilized, and uh, Fabi, uh, Fabi could go for g5 here. It's a very interesting uh, idea, but it, um, uh, well, ruins the pawn structure in front of his king a little bit. For example, if bishop g3 captures, captures, uh, and then you go bishop to g7, and you have a very... And you have a very nice game with the bishop pair, and the bishop pair should uh, uh, should be enough to compensate for your uh, uh, well, a uh, bit of an advanced king spawn structure. So after rook a to e1, Fabi doesn't go for g5 first. He says, "Okay, that's uh, that's always possible. Let's go rook to b8 first. Now force white to deal with rook captures on b2, uh, but uh, first McShane goes h3." Uh, he does, he forces Fabi now to deal with uh, with the bishop, uh, but Fabi of course trades uh, on, on f4 first. We have knight captures on f4, queen captures on f4, and now bishop back to h5, remaneuvering this bishop over to g6. But now knight to d1. Uh, there is no uh, threat of bishop captures followed by rook captures here uh, because black has to keep an eye on the f7 pawn for now. So rook to b4, a very nice rook lived by Fabi, now uh, activating this rook and also pushing the queen back. We have queen to f2 and now c5, just advancing that pawn, not allowing queen captures on a7. Uh, we have b3, now the knight can move as there is no more rook captures on b2, and now rook back to b6. From here, Fabi can use the rook uh, for, for defensive and also attacking purposes. Uh, we have knight back to f3, 
uh, and uh, uh, again uh, rook b to e6 now doubling up here and here you are starting to put some pressure on the e5 pawn uh, there is no danger of captures and captures uh, to, to win the e5 pawn because uh, you still have to keep an eye on the f7 pawn so you can't just give up your light square bishop uh, we have knight to e3 uh, attacking the d5 pawn and now queen to d7 uh, uh, still defending the d5 pawn, but now the f7 pawn is also guarded by the queen, so now you can move your bishop and maybe even capture on f3 if needed. Uh, so uh, McShane prevents it with g4, bishop to g6, and now knight to g2. And here you can see that uh, McShane has everything nicely locked up, this bishop not really doing all that much, this bishop not doing all that much, and this knight is coming to f4 and is going to get very unpleasant for Fabi. With c4, there is no other active move everything is completely locked down and now knight to f4 uh, and here if you decide to move the rook uh, for example if you try something like rook to e7 then knight captures captures and captures on a7 is just giving too much to white it's uh not something Fabi is interested in doing. So first, Fabi plays C captures on D3. Uh, it's interesting because if you go for the rook, for example, if uh, knight captures, rook captures on E6, and C captures on D3, then black has bishop captures on D3. And once you move the rook, bishop to E4, and even though you're up the exchange, uh, Fabi's bishop pair now will come alive, and it's just a, uh, just a much, much better position for Fabi. So, uh, McShane doesn't go for the rook, he plays C, captures on D3, the knight nicely covers the D3 pawn, and now bishop to B4, attacking uh, McShane's rook. We have rook back to D1, and now, uh, again, rook, to, uh, rook 6 to E7. Now Fabi moves the rook as he doesn't want to give it away. Uh, you could also play rook to A6 to try and keep an eye on the A7 pawn, but then E6 is very strong. For example, rook captures, you're going to play knight captures, still you have to give it up, rook captures, and now you still lose the A7 pawn. So instead, Fabi goes to rook to E7, uh, and now McShane just grabs the pawn. Uh, queen captures uh, on A7. Uh, so, uh, we have bishop back to h7, not allowing this capture here, and now queen back to d4, now threatening the d5 pawn, but also the bishop on b4. So you cannot defend both of them, uh, Fabi plays c5, gives up the d5 pawn, queen captures on d5, now of course, uh, as McShane is up two pawns, he wants to trade queens, but Fabi plays queen to a7, he goes after the a2 pawn, uh, but uh, McShane doesn't, doesn't care, he plays queen to c4. Uh, with with good reasons. Uh, we have queen captures on a2, and now he has to decide whether he wants to go rook to a1 or uh, decide to start attacking right away. For example, if rook to a1, the queen gets under attack, queen b2, and now you have queen to d5. Now, uh, keeping an eye on the a8 square, rook to a8 could be, could be very dangerous, but uh, he starts attacking right away, g5. Uh, and okay, we have h captures and the knight captures on g5. Now, as this diagonal is opened up, he uses this to remaneuver the queen. Queen to a8, check by Fabi, king to g1, and now queen to c6. Uh, but this allows McShane to further improve his position, d4. You cannot capture because queen captures queen. queen. So, bishop to f5, now getting uh, more control of the e6 square. And now, what do you play here? d5 is too early. If, if d5, queen to h6 comes with an attack on the knight, so your pawns are just over extended. Uh, so first, knight to d5, attacking Fabi's rook on e7. Uh, we have rook to d7, and now what do you play here? There's a double attack on the knight. Uh, so uh, if rook captures here, then you will be able to capture on d5. So here, McShane went uh, knight back to e3, but there was also a very interesting move, knight to f6 check. Still, you're going to recapture the bishop, so it's not a, a peace sacrifice. If g captures, you will go d5 first, push the queen back, queen c7, and only now recapture on f5. Uh, rook captures, for example, on e5, and now queen to g4 uh, creates a very deadly attack for white. But it's uh, that's too much to calculate, and uh, McShane is uh, uh, you know burning his time uh, uh, really a lot. I don't know the exact uh, time on the clock at this moment, but uh, it, it was really low. The idea is that if rook captures, you have knight to e4 check you can't block with the rook because of knight f6 check so you have to move back and only then queen captures here and you get to this position that it's just uh, it's just uh, beautiful for white uh, but okay mcshane finds a, a a line that is almost just as good and requires less calculation he plays knight to e3 there's a double attack on the bishop bishop to g6 and again d5 so pushing the queen back queen to c7 and now knight to g4 
all of his pawns are nicely defended so it's just amazing how uh, slowly but surely McShane is improving his position look at those beautiful knights look at the queen there the pawns are ready to be pushed forward the rooks are incredible and uh, well it's just a beautiful position with queen to d8 attacking the knight here and here McShane uh, McShane should just push h4 uh, there is nothing Fabi can do to counter this and then continue his attack uh, with, uh, with uh, the, the move he decided uh, to go with but he uh, decides to push e6 right away and it's a it's a it's a mistake but uh, it, it's a too complicated of a mistake even for Fabi to take advantage of in, in time trouble because here uh, best for black is queen captures on g5 Fabi captured on e6 if queen captures and pawn captures this is the best uh, sequence for black uh, because now you have rook to e4 attacking the queen also the queen covers the d8 square but it's so complicated for example rook to a1 you give up the queen rook captures on c4 and now you play rook to a8 check king h7 and now b captures on c4 and now it seems like black is up a queen but white is getting a queen next move uh but the the fact of the matter is white is not getting a new queen because fabi has bishop to a5 and it's just uh, i mean it, it, it's just uh, crazy how, how complicated and beautiful this game is, uh, especially the lines that never happened over the board, because now you have to capture the bishop, and now you have f5. You uh, attack the pinned piece, once the rook retreats to bring a queen into the game, now you play f captures on g4, and once the queen gets into the game, now you have queen to e3 check, and you have a perpetual. Uh, rook f2, you're gonna go queen g3 check, king f1, you're gonna capture here with check, if king e1, you're gonna go queen back to e3 with check, and you will always be able to keep on checking the white king, white king will not be able to escape on the queen side due to the bishop covering this diagonal. So although e6 is a mistake, it's a beautiful mistake, and it's one that uh, no one would take advantage of. So f captures on e6 by Fabi, with knight captures on e6 attacking the queen, and now queen to b8. And here, uh, McShane just shows what a natural attacker he is. This is move 40, so time control has been reached. Uh, now McShane uh, is granted additional time on the clock, and he continues the attack with d6. It's just a beautiful move, opening up this diagonal, threatening some of the nastiest discoveries. Uh, and Fabi plays rook captures on d6. It is the best move in the position, and uh, he has to allow a certain amount of discoveries. Uh, we have knight to c7, uh, checking the king. We have rook d to e6, now blocking check, uh, trying to... Uh, trying to give back some material if the knight moves then you have queen to g3 check with a perpetual so you can't just it's a it's a great position for white but you have to be careful if you move the knight uh queen g3 check uh, get, uh ensures uh, fabi a perpetual so rook to d7 by luke this is uh beautiful defending the knight adding another attacker and uh, asking fabi what do you do here fabi immediately unpins he plays king to h8 and here this is the, the celebrated position that, uh, I mean, we already saw how, how beautiful this game is, but now uh, feel free to pause the video and try to find uh, the winning move for McShane in this position while I give you a couple of seconds. For those of you who were able to do it, uh, I, I just don't believe you, as it's, uh, uh, we, we could make a, a, a separate video just discussing this idea, uh, but if you, if you have found it, all the lines, then you are, you're probably a, a hidden 2800 player, uh, but for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's actually knight to f6, and it, it seems logical now that you see it, of course, you now see queen to h4, uh, bishop blocks queen to h7 mate it's very simple right well not really uh it's uh, it's extremely complicated well you have to first see what happens if rook captures for example if rook captures well or if g captures either way but let's let's check out the g captures first if you capture with this then it's queen to h4 check king to g8 and now queen to h6 threatening mate here uh, and once you block mate we have bishop to f7 now covering the g7 square now you play rook captures on f7 king captures and queen to h7 check and now the point is after you move the king king f8 now comes the knight captures on e6 with check there is no move the king has nowhere to go you have to capture the knight and once the rook captures queen h8 check 
king e7 and you pick up black's queen on b8 queen captures on b8 and you have a completely winning position so after knight to f6 g captures doesn't doesn't work uh, what about rook captures on f6 it's similar queen to h4 check bishop blocks bishop to h7 and now rook captures on f6 black cannot recapture because the rook would cover the, the h7 square and queen to h7 will be checkmate so rook to g8 and now you just move the rook back rook to f8 and you get this uh, position where black is pretty much without a move uh the queen has uh, troubles getting into the game uh you have some ideas like maybe rook d5 rook to h5 it's uh uh, it's not that simple as, uh, for example, if, if you try this idea, queen will capture the knight and if rook h5 you push the g6 pawn, the queen from c7 will be guarding the, the bishop, but it's it's an overwhelming position for white. Uh, so that's what happens if knight to f6. What happens if black ignores you and doesn't capture it at all? There's a rook to e4, so a really complicated move. Offering the exchange, attacking white's queen, any, anything is possible here. But here, McShane has knight captures on e8. I mean... Uh, even even he did he did reach time uh, control he had time but it's just uh, it's just disgusting for example you capture the queen rook to f f8 check now you will go king to h7 and now knight to f6 check you cannot capture due to the pin here king to h6 and now knight back to g8 check you push the king back king g5 knight e6 check at any point you can just grab black's queen doesn't really matter king to h4 or wherever rook captures here and you end up this line being up a whole rook of course in a completely winning position so uh, after king to h8 knight to f6 uh, the, the the mortal elusive move but uh, mcshane misses it and he plays queen to f4 it's uh, all it's the second best move uh, you're threatening knight captures on e6 just picking up a rook if if black trades queens you also capture the queen so black cannot recapture the knight and if you capture the knight with the rook also just queen captures queen is in the position uh, but it allows Fabi to, to wiggle out. We have queen to b6. Uh, now Fabi gives up the exchange. He's very happy that he can uh, give up the exchange to continue the game. We have knight captures, queen captures, and now rook to d6. Attacking the queen. Also, the bishop is behind the queen. We have queen to e4. Now Fabi wants to trade queens and try to hold this endgame being down the exchange. Queen to g5, attacking the bishop twice, and now king to h7 defending. We have queen to h4 with check. King back to g8 and now queen to g3, not allowing any ideas uh, to, to start checking the, the white king. And also if the knight moves, you also have a double attack on the bishop here. So king to h7, Fabi repeats, he wants to defend his bishop. Uh, and now knight to f2, blocking this diagonal, to not to allow any checks, also attacking the queen. With queen to c2, you have to keep an eye on the bishop here and now knight to d3. A uh, very interesting idea, uh, trying to trying to go in for the end game with the bishop captures on d3. But uh, Fabi plays a different line. Fabi plays bishop to e4 instead. He doesn't want to go into the end game now. And now queen to g5, a very strong move, threatening queen to h5 check, followed by queen captures uh, rook here with check. So queen to e2, you have to uh, guard the h5 square. And now once again. Feel free to pause the video, this one's a little easier, and try to find the winning move for white. Uh, well, I'll give you a couple of seconds. For those of you who were able to do it, uh, congratulations on spotting a move with the knight back, as, well, when, when, when it's possible, it is the strongest move. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's knight to c1. And here, uh, black has no way of uh, keeping control of the h5 square, uh, Fabi is without a move here whatever you play queen h5 check picks up the rook with check is game over uh, or or you can just trade everything with queen g2 and well captures 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 and you are up a whole rook uh pretty much a pointless idea so knight to c1 winning on the spot but mcshane misses it he plays knight captures on b4 uh, we have c captures on b4 and now rook to d2, uh, pushing the queen back. Even though uh, uh, both of them reach time control, McShane is again very, very low on the clock. Uh, we have queen back to a6. Uh, again, uh, now if uh, if this check happens, then the queen can block. And if you capture the rook, then the black queen captures the rook on d2. So it's not a problem. Uh, queen to h5 check. We have queen to h6. Now uh, the idea we discussed, but now queen captures on h6 instead. Uh, here, McShane goes for the end game with king captures on h6 and rook e1, uh, uh, hoping for rook e2 to uh, to win the uh, the material here. We have rook to e5, uh, king to h2, not allowing rook g5 to come with check. So king h2 and now rook to d5. Here, 
uh, Fabi wiggles out again, offers a trade. Rook captures, Bishop captures, and Rook to e3. So here we have an endgame. Uh, McShane still up the exchange, but uh, it will be very hard as uh, when the king joins the game, Bishop, uh, Bishop from e6 will be constantly targeting both of uh, McShane's pawns. Uh, but uh, okay, g5 uh, with king to g3, improving the position of the king, and king to g6. Uh, king to f2. Uh, and now comes king to f5. Fabi brings the king even deeper into the position. We have g3 for the rook and now bishop to e6. King to e2 and now bishop back to d5. Constantly keeping an eye on this pawn here and the king is guarding this pawn. We have king to d2 and now bishop back to e6. We have rook to f3 check, king to e5. As you see, uh, the bishop is uh, constantly uh, attacking these two pawns. Uh, rook e3 check, we have king to f6 and now king to c2. Uh, bishop to f5 check, uh, the king ha cannot uh, cross here as uh, the pawn and the bishop create a wall for the white king so there is no crossing here. We have king to c1 and now bishop to e6, again just keeping an eye on both pawns. Uh, we have king to d2 and now bishop back to d5. We have king to c2 and now bishop back to e6. Fabi is of course very happy with the draw here, there is nothing to do other than that. Uh, king back to b2 and now bishop to f5. We have rook to g3, uh, bishop to e6 and now rook back to d3. Uh, we have king to e5 uh, and now comes rook to e3 with check. King f6 and now finally uh, McShane as he sees that there's no way of breaking through plays rook to e4. He allows this capture and he goes for this capture as well. Uh, a bit stronger perhaps would have been king to c1 trying to go uh, get this king to the king side as you can always capture the b4 pawn. There's no rush in doing that uh, but McShane decides to pick it up right away. Now g4, Fabi starts pushing his pass pawn, rook to e4 and now g3. We have king to c3. Uh, king to f5, attacking the rook, rook e1, and now king to f4. We have b4 by McShane, king to f3, and now b5. King to f2, attacking the rook, and now king to d2, just defending it. We have g2, and now b6 by McShane. Uh, and of course, now you don't, uh, of course, trade everything and allow b7. You have to cover the light square, uh, b7 square with the bishop. Uh, and here, McShane just played rook to e2. And it was in this position that they agreed to a draw as there is nothing to do here. Uh, it's uh, it's just pointless. Uh, you will constantly have to keep an eye on this pawn. And uh, there there is no way to, to make any progress here. Just, uh, you know, the, the king will hide. And if you want to prevent uh, uh, the pawn from queening, you will have to constantly keep checking and pinning. And there is no way uh, your pawn will ever uh, cross the b7 square. So yeah, uh, here uh, McShane and Caruana agreed to a draw in an uh, well in a ruined immortal game for McShane, and uh, well it's just a, a very tough break. But uh, you know there are people who would play knight of six check, uh, but those are people who would not get uh, uh, who would not uh, get a, a high rating in chess uh, you know over the course of time because if you can't calculate everything, yes you're gonna play it, but uh, unless you're the next Michal Tal. Uh, you know, you, you just don't know uh, everything you have to calculate. And if you play it without calculating, you will most likely lose games, especially against 2,800 players like uh, Caruana. So it was a beautiful move, but... Uh, and, of course, McShane saw it. McShane definitely saw it, and he was thinking about it, but uh, seeing it and playing it against Caruana are two very different things. Uh, so, yeah, uh, the tough break and uh, a missed opportunity for McShane not only to beat Corona but also to take the lead in the tournament. Uh, now the standings are, I will, I will put a link in the description below for you to check out the standings. There are 150 players, I can't uh, mention all of them, but you will be able to click on the link and check out the standings for yourself. But uh, so far in the lead uh, with, uh, with four points, I believe, Wang Hao, Fabiana Corona, Luke McShane, Vladimir Ferosev, uh, uh, Alexander Grishuk, uh, Alexei Shirov, and Parha Maksudlu. Uh, so we'll see what happens in round six. Uh, I would like to thank uh, James Dunn, uh, Prathamesh Mahajan, uh, Michael Zhao, uh, Nikolaus uh, Thohas, uh, and Prakar Maini for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the uh, uh, this very nice Swiss tournament, the, the Isle of Man uh, chess tournament. Uh, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and of course uh, whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all, I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.